Uh, my name is Paul. I'm the Socialist Party organiser in South London. Paul, the rail fares have gone up again, as they do every year. What's happened? So rail fares are up uh, 3.4% on average, although in some cases, uh, for some services, it's more uh, than that. And that's at the same time as wages uh, largely being stagnant. Wages have only gone up by 2.5%. Uh, so in effect, it's, um, it's, it's rail fares, uh, something that's essential uh, for almost everybody in this country uh, going up and taking up a larger chunk of people's income. But 3.4% sounds like quite a small increase. Um, yeah, this is on top of a massive, infla a massive inflation of rail fares since privatisation um, and of course since, this, uh, since the Tories came to power in 2010. In some cases, uh, rail fares have gone up by 50%. On average, rail, uh, uh, season ticket prices are up uh, uh, thirty percent in that uh, seven uh, year period. So while it seems small on the face of it uh, at the moment, um, actually year on year, decade on decade, in fact, um, it's it's far uh, more than that. So you're saying that since privatisation, fares have gone up, but rail bosses are also saying that all of this money we're paying in fares is being spent on improving the service. Well, people don't really see that. In the five weeks uh, leading up to Christmas, 48% uh, of all uh, journeys uh, were either late or cancelled. I know from my personal experience, uh, being in uh, South London over that period, there were three major lines closed from where I lived. There was no train uh, to get out. There was only one train, sorry, an hour to get out uh, across London, and I imagine that was the case uh, for many, many people. Uh, alongside that, the trains are becoming more over overcrowded uh, they're becoming less accessible and they're becoming less safe with the government's drive to uh, remove or actually and the train operators drive to remove uh, uh, guards from the trains have the trains operated only by the driver which means that disabled access is more difficult because of course it's the guards that help disabled people onto trains it's the guards that operate the doors uh, and so on and the driver is now expected to know what's going on uh, throughout the uh, whole uh, whole of the train so um, the government says this is going on in, in uh, this is being invested back into the service but we're certainly not seeing the benefit of that and, and those improvement works uh, that the money is that some of the money is being spent on they're, they're, they're overrunning they're overspending they're late and in many cases they're unnecessary but the rail bosses tell us that only three percent only three pence in every pound of rail fares actually goes on their company's profit so how can this be the case well you've got to look at of course where uh, that money is being spent so for example the carriages themselves on the trains are leased uh, from uh, other uh, companies uh, much of that money is going on interest uh, uh, to, to the, the big uh, the big banks um, and and essentially what what's happening here is uh, commuters are being asked to pay for uh, the the under investment uh, and the under development uh, of the uh, of, of the of the rail service and our response to that would be why should the uh, the, the passenger have to uh, foot the bill uh, for all of this we would say take that uh, into uh, take the uh, railways into public ownership uh, and run it as a as a, a public sector body and run it for the benefit of the ordinary passenger and ordinary working class people so not just the three percent profits but all of the masses of money they say is being spent on investment you think that that shouldn't be paid for by the passengers where would the money come from um, the money would come from nationalising other parts of the economy. For us as socialists, uh, nationalising the railways would just be one part of a, of a wider uh, programme of taking the banks into public ownership, using the money that's sloshing about uh, in those banks, un uninvested by the super rich, uh, just uh, uh, sitting there. We would take uh, uh, the big 150 monopolies that control uh, vast waves of the economy uh, into public ownership and that's how we would uh, pay for uh, the railways as well as it, the state would be the collector uh, of the fares uh, so to speak as well and uh, taxing uh, the rich would pay for uh, 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 the nationalisation. So that's all well and good but how are you going to pay to bring all of these massive franchises into public ownership in the first place? Well, we wouldn't, uh, is the uh, simple uh, answer uh, to that. Um, these, uh, the, the executives of the uh, railway companies have been leeching 
for uh, years and years now, ever since privatisation. Some of them are taking home millions of pounds uh, in uh, wages. We'd stop paying that out uh, for starters. It wouldn't be those executives that run uh, our uh, railways anymore and run them into uh, into the ground. And we would pay perhaps small amounts of compensation to small investors, people that needed that money for their uh, pension uh, and so on. But initially, uh, in terms of taking it into public ownership, it would be it would be free. Uh, the government would simply uh, uh, take back control of something that is a, a public utility. So you're talking about bringing these public services back into public ownership, but only paying compensation on the basis of proven need. That's all well and good. Mm. But Jeremy Corbyn, for example, has suggested we could take the railways back into public ownership as well. And of course, the Socialist Party welcomes that proposal. But he says that we can do it simply by taking them back in as the franchises expire. What do you think about that? Well, we think, of course, that Jeremy Corbyn's uh, calls for various sectors of the uh, economy to be taken back into public ownership chief among them railways we think that's a, a very positive step that's a step forward compared to what was coming from the Labour Party under previous uh, new Labour leaders but we do see serious uh, limitations with that plan um, now Corbyn says we can bring railways back into public ownership as the franchises run out we would say that that wouldn't necessarily work um, firstly some of those franchises don't run out uh, for over or, or well over uh, a decade um, and rail uh, passengers have problems now, they have problems with fares now, they have problems with uh, uh, low investment now uh, and with a bad service now. We say that it's an, an immediate step that should be taken within the first hundred days of a Labour government is to take the railways back uh, into uh, public uh, own ownership. But under the previous publicly owned rail system, British Rail, there were still all sorts of problems, there were still all sorts of inefficiencies. It wasn't this kind of idealised world which it's sometimes presented as. Are we just saying we're going back to British Rail? No, and many people have made that call, many campaigners against uh, rail fares going up have made that call for uh, bring back uh, British Rail and, and, and we agree with that and sympathise with that sentiment uh, to uh, a large extent but for us nationalisation and the kind of nationalisation that we're calling for isn't isn't what took place in the uh, in the uh, post-war period now the problems that you identified with British Rail uh, were the were the same problems uh, that were apparent across uh, the publicly owned uh, sectors of the economy in coal, in steel, uh, in all sorts of, of enterprises. And that problem was that rather than workers and service users being put in control uh, of those uh, industries in order to uh, uh, in order to develop a democratic plan uh, for uh, the economy so that the majority of people could decide how wealth and resources were used, actually they were run by bureaucrats from Whitehall. Uh, many of whom were the very same people that ran it into the ground, ran those industries into the ground in the uh, in the uh, pre-war uh, period, uh, who of course took home uh, massive uh, massive wages and massive salaries uh, themselves, even under uh, nationalisation. Now, what we call for in the case of the railways is nationalisation under democratic uh, management and control by working class people and by the passengers that use the service. That would allow us to. Firstly, set the fares democratically and decide upon, uh, allow people to decide upon what is uh, reasonable uh, fares. It would also allow us to decide where the investment needs to go in terms of infrastructure and in terms of improving uh, the uh, railways, which doesn't take place at the moment. That's decided uh, based on what's going to be best for profits for the uh, rail operators themselves, but also uh, other uh, other businesses and other uh, capitalists. So we call for a different form of nationalisation. Uh, in that sense, we call for socialist uh, uh, nationalisation. We don't just want to run the railways better uh, for the benefit of capitalism. We want the railways as part of a publicly owned, democratically planned socialist economy.